Greetings. This pen is the Jinhao Model 8802. This is a predominantly porcelain pen. Um, it is a very heavy pen because the body is porcelain, so it weighs 45 grams. It is a uh, heavy pen, not a huge pen though. So here it is compared to a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. So you can see it's a pretty typically sized pen. Now, if you forget about the a tiger motif design here for a minute. This pen is actually stylistically very similar to a Pelican pen, uh, classic uh, Pelican design pen. So here's a Pelican um, uh, M600 and you can see that the the cap style on the top is very similar. The, the placement of the clip band, the sort of fake piston filling knob they have on the end of the Jinhao pen as opposed to the Pelican, which is a real piston filling rod, etc. So uh, piston filling knob, etc. So it's the overall shape is definitely evocative of Pelican pens, but this is not like any Pelican pen that is made. Like I said, it is a um, porcelain pen and this one happens to have a very nice tiger motif. I was born in the year of the tiger, so I picked this up because I thought it was cool. Um, they actually make this exact pen in several other styles. Here's a inlaid seashell motif, exact same pen, not porcelain though, but it has this inlaid uh, seashell, which I do not believe is real seashell, but um, has that effect. And they also make one in wood. Now the one in wood is called an 8812, but other than that it is exactly the same pen. And it is real wood. It's an actual wood pen. We'll take a look at these other two pens on another day, but today we're focusing on this one. So what do we have here? This is um, a porcelain pen. It's got a very nice motif and I believe the uh, Chinese characters here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I were told mean tiger, river, and mountain, and you see a tiger, a mountain, and a river um, uh, on uh, the uh, on the body of the pen, and it is quite nicely it is quite nicely done. The end of the pen has meant to look it accommodates posting, and it is um, meant to sort of be evocative of a piston turning knob, but it is a cartridge converter filled pen. Um, so that is not a real piston turning knob. The cap band simply says Jin Hao. It does not have a model number or anything else like that on the cap band. The clip is the normal standard Jin Hao style clip with the Jin Hao shield logo. Frankly, I think this clip would look a lot better without the Jin Hao shield logo, but that's what it is. And the top of the pen has a black uh, jewel type insert to match the black lacquer on the uh, cap and it is very much styled like a pelican uh, uh, cap uh, finial. So if you look at the just the shape of the finial on both the pelican and the Jinhao, you can see they're very, very similar. One thing that these style finials remind me of on both the pelicans and these, when I was a kid, they used to actually make pens specifically to use as an aid for dialing a telephone. If you, uh, you know, the old fashioned dial phones where you actually had to stick your finger in the dial and, and rotate it to dial the phone, they actually would make pens that had a, a special shape on the end that was designed specifically to go into the little hole so you could use the pen as a means of dialing the phone. And this shape looks a lot like that um, special type of uh, pen. Those of you who are of a, of a certain age will remember those type of pens and know what I'm talking about. They're usually cheap ballpoints and stuff like that. I'm not talking about fancier uh, uh, higher-end fountain pens. Um, the is a slip-off cap. It posts nicely and solidly over that end there. Um, it doesn't actually, the, the cap itself is relatively light relative to the body of the pen because the cap is just a metal cap with a with a plastic insert, which actually does keep the pen uh, from drying out quite well. Um, but the cap itself relative to the body is not very heavy, so it does not really feel back weighted or anything like that uh, when, you, uh, when you post the pen. Uh, 
It's got a nice size section, kind of long, smooth, so it's a little bit maybe on the slippery side. This little step down here is nothing so to speak of, and it does have a nice little rim with the uh, chrome plating on the rim at the end. The nib is really unimpressive. It's a small nib. It says Jin Hao. It says 18K GP. Um, which supposedly stands for 18 karat gold plated, but you could take that with a grain of salt, as this is clearly a steel nib, and it does have some nice scroll work on it, but it's an otherwise unexceptionally sized nib. A larger nib would probably look a little better in this, in this pen, and it's got an ordinary plastic feed. I say it every time, but it really bears repeating on these inexpensive Chinese pens of this type before you even try inking up. Pull out the nib and feed. They do pull out quite easily. Rinse them off in a little soapy water, rinse them, dry them, put them back in before you even try to ink it. And you will definitely save yourself uh, a lot of potential annoyance. Um, the nib is unlabeled, but it's roughly a medium, um, as we'll, we'll see uh, when we write. So, uh, oh, and as I said, one other thing, as I said, it is a, it is a cartridge converter pen. Um, and um, it does uh, come with the converter, and it actually is a pretty nice converter. It says labeled Jin Hao. Um, it's got the little Jin Hao logo on the converter, and it's sort of like a like a brass fitting here. So it's actually a pretty nice as converters on inexpensive pens go. And this is definitely one of those inexpensive ten to fifteen dollar ish uh, Chinese pens. So it's a it's definitely an, it falls in that inexpensive Chinese pen category. Um, so I think about the only thing left is to see how this pen writes. And we're gonna find that out right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here today is a Jin Hao uh, model 8802. And uh, like I said, this is an unlabeled nib, but I'm gonna call it uh, a medium. Um, and um, it's definitely a steel nib. I mean, the nib is, is unimpressive as far as looks go, but it does write quite smooth. I mean, it's again, it's, it's very much like your typical Jin Hao nibs that you get. I'm usually very pleased with the Jin Hao nibs, and this one is no exception. It writes nice and wet and writes nice and smooth, etc. And um, like I said, the inner cap in this pen seals quite well, so this ink, ink has not really been drying out on me. Etc. So it, it really it really is is quite a pleasant, reliable writing pen, and um, does uh, write fairly wet. Again, not, you know, fairly stiff nibs. You're not going to really get much in the way of flex here. Um, as you can see, it does uh, it does railroad, and it's not particularly flexy. But again, it's not really sold as such, so uh, no complaints there. But as a normal writer. It is, um, it is definitely a smooth, smooth writing, writing pen, and it looks, uh, it looks cool. I like the, I like the tiger uh, motif quite a bit. Um, the um, section is quite comfortable. Like I said, the step down doesn't really ma matter very much. It is a smooth section, so it's not really going to give you much in the way of grippiness, but it is comfortable, um, and it gives you several options of where you can hold it, which is always nice on these larger sections. So all in all good writing pen um, slightly above average wetness I would say and um, writes uh, writes pretty well um, so that's I think about all we can really say about this pen this week pretty nice uh, pretty nice uh, Jin Hao Chinese made pen let's talk about the ink a little bit okay this ink is a platinum pigmented sepia so this is a pigmented ink so most fountain pen inks are dye based inks meaning the color is um, essentially completely dissolved in the water which is the basis of the ink in a case of a pigmented ink that is not the case the pigment actually are very very fine particles which are suspended uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the in the in the uh, in the ink, um, as and most pigmented inks, as you could, might be able to see from here, sort of have this sort of milky 
uh, consistency to them in the bottle. They don't. They lack a little bit of translucency because that is essentially the particles that the, the suspend. The, the, that's essentially the pigment that you're that you're that you're seeing there. You do want to shake these a uh, bit for that exact reason before you uh, before you fill uh, the uh, the uh, pen. Um, as a consequence of that, the pigmented inks tend to just kind of look a little bit different. So what, what we're seeing here is sort of a sort of richness and a sort of, um, it's, hard to, it's hard to kind of quantify, but there's sort of a, a almost heaviness of the ink on the paper that you, um, uh, a, most dye base inks don't have. This, again, this ink tends to, to lay a bit heavier and that's essentially a, a, a traditional characteristic of uh, pigmented inks. As a consequence of that, I typically would only use an ink like this in a pen like this one that can be completely disassembled and flushed to clean. I would not use a pigmented ink in a pen that is in any way challenging to clean, certainly not in a sack filled pen. Um, I would only use it in a vac filler that is completely disassembled, so assemblable such as a Twisby or something like that. So again, just um, that's just my personal view. Um, you know, you don't want something like this gumming up your works on a vintage pen that's like hard to clean, uh, for example, something like that. So again, I, I confine it typically to a pen such as this, which is perfect. This can be completely disassembled, completely flushed, very very easy pen to clean and that's why this is the pen that i use the um, pigmented ink in this is sort of i guess in terms of color the thing i like about this is it's really a true sepia i mean that's really sepia is an odd one you know it's not just brown there are other it's again it's kind of hard to explain but there are definitely aspects of the color that are definitely evocative of sepia that you do not typically see in uh, normal brown inks. If you've seen old photography, sepia tone prints, you know what I mean. This this particular tint should be um, familiar to you. So um, I like it a lot. As I've said before, I'm a, definitely a big fan of inks in the brown family, and this is definitely a a nice one. It has a certain, uh, like I said, heaviness on the paper, but it's in the same time, there's a certain translucency to it as well. So it definitely has sort of these very hard to pin down characteristics that I just find very, very appealing and like uh, quite a bit. And as a consequence of that, you do get shading, as you can see here, there's a bit of shading going on, etc. So um, I really like it a lot. Again, I wouldn't put this in a very fine pen either. You're not going to get, if you, if you have a very fine, extra fine nib, um, you're really not going to get any of the sort of, uh, 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 you're not going to really appreciate how this type of ink looks. So um, I would recommend this ink, but definitely put it in a slightly broader pen and in a pen that's, uh, that's easy to clean. So I think that will do it for this episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please, please subscribe. And if you did not, please leave a comment and let me know why. And I will very much endeavor to improve. And until next time, bye-bye.